Hey, welcome to Tech Thursday. Let's check out how to do a reaction video in OBS. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the cooking with teams with the commentary. And then I'm going to show you how the open broadcaster software was used to create it. And then finally, we'll take a look at the full Tech Thursday uh, cooking with teams episode and how OBS could be used with that. So here we go. Commentary real time. Hey everyone, welcome to Cooking with Teams. This is In the Thursday, right corner. September 2nd. My name's Dan Ray, and Here we, we are going to take a look at a number of different things today, including to pause how to make a sentence. reaction video out of a video that you recorded. And that should be fun. Remember where my We're going to do so are. with OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. And we're going to look at kind of that inception moment of me on video and then me commenting about a video. Here's a pause. That works. Hey, Dan. Because I'm going to be doing both, I want to give myself some pauses here where I can insert my opinion. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself. Cool, there's another break. And I should be up in this corner. I'm up here. Because hey. in this corner, I might be doing things with the new meeting function in Teams to show off webinar and live show events. Webinar which and are live events. Advanced, oh, what I would cool. consider advanced events or uh, meetings that you set up in Teams. A regular Teams meeting is done through schedule meeting either in Outlook or Teams. Webinars and live events, however, are set up in the Teams interface. This is how I've you got do something coming up live later this month. Cooking with Teams is a tagline for that as and well. Yeah. Stephen Rose will be showing that video on it. So now let's take a look at the settings for putting my video and my screen video in the same layer of my video playback. First thing I can do is in OBS, bring in a source and I can either bring in display capture or window capture, depending on what I'm trying to capture. In this case, I'm just gonna pull in my entire display one from my computer and capture the cursor. And then that comes into OBS and I can resize it, play around with the sizing of that window. And then under the settings, there's a filter. And I can add a chroma key. And one of the settings in chroma key is the opacity of that window. So I can make that window opaque so that my actual video window <clears throat> sits over it. So this is how I made the original video. Display capture, video capture, and then make one layer opaque. This would work whether I want to whiteboard over my video. So if I want to take notes in the air, I can do that through here. I can either use gray on white or white on a darker color to whiteboard. Or I could use this for Teams to show different features in Microsoft Teams. So next, let's take a look at how we can make a commentary video out of an original video. Okay, the first thing we're going to have to do for this to work is actually use OBS to bring in a video capture device, which is my Surface Studios LifeCam camera. I can see this in the properties of the device. And then I'm going to also pull in a media source. And this media source is going to be the other file that I want to play and react to. 
So you can see what that looks like here in OBS. And then what I can do in OBS is I can actually drag my window, the commentary window, to somewhere else on the screen, maybe the upper right or the upper left, make my video playback full screen. And then by selecting the video source, media source, and playing that back, I can actually record now over here on the far right while I am reacting to my own video. So I need to get these all set up the way I want them, right size and everything, and then I could actually react to my own video that I've recorded with OBS. And OBS, you can see here, layered me on top of my Teams application. I'll show you that next in the software, how to set that up. So now this is the fun part. We're gonna pull these three elements that we've talked about so far together. I've taken a screenshot, uh, or sorry, a uh, the, the layers that I put together full screen before, and I've put them up here in the leftmost corner. And then in the same area that I added my sources, I'm gonna add a media source, and the media source is going to become the file that I want to play back. And the file I want to play back is my original. And I can tell it whether to start, restart playback, when source becomes active, what happens when it ends. And then I can put that video media source into the file. And you can see that the video media source is now playing. So I can pause it, I can rewind it. And in the same thing that we did, I could either make this opaque or I can tell it through the properties, the order. So if I move that down a level and move it down another level, my live video up here appears. So now what I can do is on the far right, start recording with OBS and I'm watching the video and then I can actually commentate on my original video. Pretty cool, huh? That's it for Tech Thursday. Thanks for joining me. Have a great rest of your Thursday afternoon, morning or evening, depending on where you are in the world. Thanks again, everybody. Hey everyone, welcome to Cooking with Teams. Today, I'm gonna to show you some of the differences between a webinar function in Microsoft Teams and a live event function in Microsoft Teams. Scheduling those different types of events how they might be similar and how they might differ from each other. The other thing that we're doing besides cooking with teams is kind of an inception type thing. This is also Tech Thursday. So something else that I'll be posting for Tech Thursday is the idea of setting up your own reaction video to a video you made. And we'll do that with OBS or Open Broadcaster software. You can download this for free and play around with it. That's what I'm using to put Teams here with me in this video that we're shooting for Microsoft Teams webinar versus live event. So wouldn't it be fun to be able to comment on your own video real time or that's how it will appear once I get all these layers put together. One thing I can do with a live event in Microsoft Teams is I can schedule my live event for a time in the future and I could have a cooking competition where I have more of a curated almost show produced 
approach to a cooking competition. And maybe it's Dan versus my wife, Eva, and we're cooking something and we're competing and it's a show and we might have commentary through it. We might have reaction videos to the cooking competition and maybe we react to our own video. Wouldn't that be cool? So I set this up, I can invite other presenters right over here to the right. And then once I have my date and time set, maybe we're doing this next Thursday, we're doing it at 3 p.m., we need an hour to record, I can set up my live event just like that. And my live event differs from a webinar in one or more key areas. One of the areas is that you pick the live event permissions. These permissions come from the administration and the settings your company has set for your live events. So I can set up a public live event, an organization-wide live event, or invite particular people and groups from my company to the live event. I'm gonna make this one public so we can walk through some of the steps there. And as we look further down, I have the capability of choosing teams, deciding if the recording is available to people, what languages I want to allow this to be translated into. Let's pick French, German. My wife took German in high school. And let's pick Spanish because I know enough to be dangerous. So we've got three languages. And then I can also choose Q&A for a live event. Another difference between a webinar and a live event is the Q&A in a live event is curated meaning for this produced competition we have, if somebody asks a question about what we're cooking or something else, it doesn't show up for everybody real time. It shows up for the producers of this live event, and then the producers can either answer the person that asked a question directly, or they can elevate that and post it to everybody watching the live event from their devices. This is nice because it doesn't interrupt the flow of our competition. We might have it timed, we might have planned commentary, planned question and answer periods, that type of thing. The producers could go ahead and pass over questions that they want to elevate to everyone and have the commentators or the people hosting this competition, judging this competition, actually answer some of those questions. Really cool. So that is how I schedule a live event in Microsoft Teams. The other difference is I have a link to join as the presenter and or producer, depending on how I have this set up. I can set up other producers to help me with the logistics and then presenters that are actually doing the presenting and uh, sharing their screens or doing their video, whatever they're doing. But you'll notice up here, I have an attendee link. And the attendee link is for the audience. That's what separates the audience from the people that are actually presenting or producing this live event. So there's kind of a back, uh, back office or back view of the live event for the producers and the presenters. And then there is a separate link for attending a live event. And this could be sent out in a number of different ways. Well, what we've heard from a number of you is that when I host a webinar or an event, maybe I want a webinar style approach where I have interactivity. Maybe this is a cooking demonstration where I want you following along, asking questions real time, showing me what your ingredients look like, asking questions about, hey, is this, is this okay? And a webinar would allow that plus a webinar allows a registration form to be added to it. So I can actually have a registration form as well as my event and the link to attend the event sent to anybody that's presenting. Some of the differences between a webinar approach and a live event approach. A live uh, event scales to thousands of attendees. A webinar scales to up to a thousand attendees. So they're both for large 
potential audiences, but some of the differences would be the experience that people get in the chat and the types of things I want to gather from them beforehand integrated into the setup of my event. So we could do the same type of thing. This is Dan and Eva show you how to make uh, apple cobbler. And Eva would be showing more than I would if we're completely honest. We're going to do this next Thursday. We're going to do it after or maybe before our competition. We're going to do our competition afterwards. We're doing this recording at 1 to 2 p.m. We want to invite some people so I can set up a registration form. The registration form is here. It's got a very wide, narrow image that can be used with it. So I could use a Cooking with Teams logo at the top. I can add my events. I've noticed this. Uh, it doesn't seem to pick up the fact that the event was scheduled for a different time and dates. I'm asking if that's a known bug because it's one that I have discovered. So I can make sure it's 9, 9, 1 to 2 p.m. for attendees. I can decide what I am gathering from my attendees. Give little speaker bios so they know who's presenting, a little bit about us. Hosts cooking with teams. And then add speaker Eva Ray actually cooks and bakes things. So I've got all that information in there. I'm gathering first name, last name, and email of people registering. Mm -hmm. And I can copy the registration link to send it to people. And then I can save this actual event. So some of the differences between a webinar-based approach and a live event-based approach in Microsoft Teams. Hey everyone, hey, welcome so here's to our reaction video. with Teams. Let's say Playing back my that video. I have I can't hear a my video. Teams I haven't figured that out in OBS. Webinar that I want to set up for doing Friday. Wrong. But you can see me up in the, the lunchtime left-hand corner. I can put myself in the right-hand corner. What I can do a lot of what I'm with showing in the Teams interface and the calendar covered up. is right off to the right. Then I can right sit here and watch the, the video. calendar in the upper right. I can go ahead and click on the down arrow along and choose with it. webinar.